I'll be honest, I watched like 95% of long legs like this. It's usually hyperbole to say a movie is a nail biter or it kept me on the edge of my seat or this is the scariest movie of the decade. But I don't think this is the case with long legs. To be honest, I was genuinely terrified throughout the entire runtime of the movie and wanted to give you guys a quick spoiler free review to let you know if you should go see it. And for context, I went to this film almost completely cold. All I'd seen were the posters, a couple of like one sentence descriptors I'd seen like on social media that were like unavoidable. And I knew Nicolas Cage was in it, which is usually just a selling point for me. And I also caught that weird like 30 second teaser where they showed Micah Monroe's facial expression and the sound of her heartbeat going up when she first saw Cage in makeup, which is a very classic marketing ploy. But other than that, I saw no trailers. I didn't read any real reviews. I didn't really watch any clips. I just went and really had no idea what I was in for. And to be honest, this is going to kill my watch time on this video. But if you know nothing about long legs, pause this video, go get a ticket and go see it right now. I'm not going to spoil anything specific in this review, but I think honestly, the less you know about the tone, the plot points, the characters, the more effective this is going to be. I watched the trailer after getting out of the theater. And as minimal as the trailer is, they did a really good job. I still think it gives away a bit too much of the movie itself. That said, I am always, always, always going to say that spoilers ruin movies is a really dumb thing to say because movies are about the journey, not the destination. So even if you know the plot points of a movie, the cinematic experience is all about how the filmmaker connects those dots. Even if you go into Star Wars knowing that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father, it still works, right? So. Anyway, that's my rant on that. But all I'm going to say is with long legs, less is more when it comes to this one. And the mystery is only going to heighten your enjoyment. Now, for those of you that are rebellious and are still watching, thank you for supporting the channel. Here we go. First off, long legs is scary. The opening pre-title sequence literally gave me full body chills and the movie only ratchets up nonstop from there. I've seen a lot of people making comparisons to Science of Lambs and Hereditary when it comes to the tone of this movie. And while FBI agents running around after a serial killer and uh, satanic imagery are prone to draw connections to two of the most popular movies centered around those things, I think in this case it is pretty fair in terms of the tone. There's a real sense of palpable dread that lingers over the entire movie. If you saw the Argentinian film When Evil Lurks, which is streaming on Hulu, I believe, that's probably the closest I've seen when it comes to match matching like this suffocating nihilistic tone that Long Legs has, and I really, really dig it. This is probably a good time to remind you, because some people are probably already rolling their eyes, horror is subjective. So what works for me might not work for you, but to give you a sense of where I'm coming from, the films that have scared me the most in the past 10 to 12 years have been When Evil Lurks, Hereditary, The Witch, Terrified, and The Original Conjuring. So there's a bit of a temperature check to see if you're similar to me and will perceive long legs to be as scary as I do. And look for any film bros that are going to the comment section and typing out, The Conjuring isn't scary. Get out of here. The first viewing of that movie is intense. And yes, in hindsight, there have been some lackluster sequels and spinoffs that have dulled the sharp edge of that franchise but I'm never going to forget the impact of the first two Conjuring movies, especially going into that first one, not knowing what to expect. So anyway, that's my rant on The Conjuring. Similar to The Conjuring, the first viewing there, Long Legs is impactful, way more scary. And a lot of that's because it's so original, it doesn't feel lazy on any level. In recent years, we've seen a lot of horror films slap a dark filter and moody, desaturated color grades on themselves to create a sense of fear. And uh, Long Legs takes a different approach. This is not a Netflix original horror movie. The cinematography is rich and detailed. It's a visually compelling world that draws you in. It's dark, but it's not darkness that just kind of blanket obscures everything. It reveals things you need to see. Every shadow, flicker of light, it's all meticulously crafted to enhance the film's eerie atmosphere. And it all means something, most importantly. Every single shot in this movie advances the story in one way or another. The same goes for the sound design. This is honestly the area where I think Long Legs truly shines. The sound design is so effective, and it's the reason I think you should see it in theaters. The visuals are incredible, but hearing it all in surround sound is amazing, and there's this dread that keeps you on edge from the creaks in the wooden floors to the whispers that you hear in the corner to those sudden jarring noises that make you jump out of your seat like I did multiple times for the movie. The movie just feels alive. 
And while the aesthetic and style of this movie is wildly well constructed, by no means is this movie style over substance. On the contrary, the story and the characters within it are just as well constructed. The protagonist in Long Legs, Agent Lee Harker, is played by Micah Monroe, and she's channeling something akin to Jodie Foster in Signs of Lambs with that steely resolve to this kind of awkward nervousness that kind of matches Kristen Stewart's energy in Cronenberg's film uh, Crimes of the Future. But while those similarities to other characters we know and love are there, this character is very much her own. Harker is a complex, troubled, sympathetic, brilliant, and fascinating character. And I think when lists are written at the end of 2024 talking about the most powerful characters in horror, the best horror performances, her name's going to be on those lists, and it is well, well, well deserved. I know I personally went on Letterboxd right after the movie and added a bunch of movies from her filmography to my watch list because she is so damn good in this. The supporting cast is great as well. Blair Underwood is phenomenal, and if Monroe wasn't on her A-game, he very well could have stolen the entire movie out from under her. These performances are really important because in a film that's flirting with the supernatural in ways as bizarre and otherworldly as this one does, it's a necessity to have brilliant actors to keep it grounded in some level of authenticity and familiarity. On paper, this film could have easily gone wrong in a thousand different ways. It is tiptoeing across genres that are very hard to blend. And if anyone in the production, directing, sound, cinematography, if they let their hands off the wheel at any point, this thing would have ran off the road quick. But it doesn't. As grounded as the movie is and as authentic as the characters feel, it's also not afraid to get into a couple moments that are intentionally otherworldly. But it's so intentional that it works to enhance the film's eerie atmosphere rather than detract from it. Now, speaking of otherworldly, that brings me to Nicolas Cage. I will always be a Cage defender. The dude is legitimately one of the greatest actors who ever lived. The problem is, most directors aren't skilled enough to handle a powder keg wrapped in human skin like Nicolas Cage. He's either given characters that aren't really fleshed out, he's put in movies that aren't great, he's put in scenes that aren't great, or he's put alongside actors that aren't able to match the intensity or the just otherworldly vibe that Cage naturally has in any given scene. But director Oz Perkins really knows how to use Cage. It's sparing, it's intentional, and it's potent whenever he's on screen. A few seconds here, a minute there, every second of screen time he has, even when his presence is just felt in a room, is some of the scariest cinema I have ever witnessed. Whether you're a seasoned horror fan like I am or a cinephile looking for at least one good scare this year, Long Legs is a film that delivers on all fronts. The story, the performances, the visuals, the sound design, it is a rich world that you're going to want to revisit again and again and again, even if this particular world is guaranteed to scare the hell out of you. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the review, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a future review or content piece from me. And let me know in the comments what you thought of Long Legs if you saw it, or if you haven't, what's been your favorite horror movie of the year so far? Till next time, stay scared.